Do you want to know how the station shows that every passenger train is a minimum of 45 seconds apart? Let's take a look. How's it going? And welcome back to this awesome series about rails. So in the last episode we got this station all set up and ready to have multiple trains loading and unloading at the same time. And so far it's doing pretty well. Now the whole reason for having the charcoal was so we can have passengers. So in this episode we're going to take a little look at something we can do in open computers and make up something to make the passenger network really cool. So, let's get started. Okay, so this is the station between the spawn station, well the very first station we set up on the underground, and Tree Farm Island, and unlike the other one, which is an underground station, I thought we could use this one here as a bit of a modern looking above ground station. So I'm thinking though, just to give it a bit of a feel, it looks reasonably good currently. But I'm thinking what we're going to do is we'll just run a bit of a thing along here to make it more modern-ish. Like that. I need to do it on that side of course. Hopefully that should look reasonably good. Yeah, I'd say that's it gives it a bit more of a modern feel. Uh, of course, we'll need to add our MTR stuff, so let's go Minecraft. Okay, uh, at transit. Uh, um, we're not using the rail, we need some glass along here. Two, two. Yeah, that should do. And then over here, we will need to add. We will add in the door section here. That. Just like we did in the other station. Of course, in this case, it looks a bit more. And what I'll do is I'll add something similar on that side, and possibly a footbridge or something to get over there. Uh, we'll also add in though, there is also the, so those are the automatic doors. Um, try maybe one of these guys, what's this look like? Oh, okay. So, oh. Ooh. Okay, let's, let's use one of those instead, so we'll get rid of these. So we'll try, what do I have here? So we've got a glass section, so we'll put a glass section there, we'll then go two, another two, oops, one, two, uh, one, two, another two, like that, that's a little weird, I wonder if that fixes when you log out and log back in. Uh, what was I using the hit in there for? Is the hat, uh, brush? Ah, so let's change this to be direction, color, oh look at that, yep, okay, so that's looking cool, we'll try the doors, uh, that's the doors there, one, two, one, two, and same with over here, one, two, are those the right doors or are those the other doors? Oh, I want the screen doors, that's what I've done wrong there. So we want the door section. Well, they blend in quite well. There you go, look at that. Perfect. We'll just hit those again. So we'll hit that so it gives it the red colour. And look at that, cool. Looking more like a rail station now, isn't it? 
we want to add in some form of way of getting across because you could go well, I suppose you could walk around here and there's this path going this way it's probably not that bad really is it we could lift this up though so let's go grab this uh, position one and we'll go up over here we will go yeah, just make sure we're aligned properly there, yep. And position two, which will then select that whole area. Uh, will it select anything I don't want? Doesn't look like it. Cool. So then we want to move it, I don't know, let's go up. It's already up there, so we want to go one, two, three maybe. So we're up the same height as that. So move three up. And then the blocks are there, is that there? No, I probably won't undo that and move four up. Like that. Seems quite high though. Or do we just get rid of that path altogether? Hmm. Undo that and just go up. Theory, the train comes in at that height. No, I like the three. Let's go back to three. Move three up like that. We'll grab the stone slabs that are around here and we'll just continue it along. Uh, we could probably actually stack them. Uh, except for the top. Is that, that's not quite it. <laughs> that's annoying. Let's just bring that into line with it. Two, move that. Uh, and then we don't actually want to grab. We don't want to overwrite that. We only want to go to about here. So, pause one to go to there, maybe? Or. Bit there. No, I got one from there. It's so up to there. Pause one. And then we'll stack to them. What I expected at all. Um, maybe stack one of them. Stack one. Perfect. And what's it look like underneath here? Doesn't give you a lot of room, but then again, you'll be in a. Yeah, there's probably enough room, uh, just enough room, maybe. Maybe. Uh, possibly could have the roof a little lower, but eh. We'll probably just run this along here, so we'll pull these guys down. Uh, we'll just unselect that so it doesn't get in the way of what we're looking at. What I'm thinking we'll do is, pretty much similar to the other design, we'll have doors on the open when the train comes. I won't do that on camera, because you've already seen it, but what I will do is set up the microcontroller and I'm going to add a little piece of code, which might help a little bit for traffic control. So give me a second, I'm going to get all that ready and do the other pieces of the base, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so before we return and have a look at what I've changed, I thought I should show you a really cool little tool that I found online by Lyra. And that you have a custom EEPROM, which can then boot off the internet. So you can have all your code stored in the remote location and every time the machine boots, in our case our microcontroller boots, it'll reload the new code and any change you made rather than having to disassemble and reassemble. Uh, and I'll have a link down in the description how to get to the tool. So one thing you will need to have before you go too much into this is the next command I'm going to run requires the internet, so you will need to have an internet command card in it. Probably best if you're making this in survival to make two of them at the same time because you'll need one for the microcontroller in a moment uh, and we'll get into that in, in, when we get to it though um, so what we need to do is because we're getting off now you could get this another way if you really wanted to if you wanted to copy it on somehow that's up to you but it is quite a long command uh, so if we go a wget 
and then this address which as I said I'll post the link down to the original page that has the most up to date version of it in the description below so check that out uh, we'll hit enter and that'll create a file on the local machine called Titan BIOS we'll then go into the EEPROM here and switch them out into our custom one we'll type flash Titan BIOS hit enter when you're ready press yes we are ready now and we will call this one Titan Train Delays uh, we also need to now normally of course I would say take the EEPROM out and do something else with it but we actually need to do something slightly further we need to go into lure type component EEPROM set data and then the web address you're getting things from so if you're getting it from localhost now if you do get it from localhost you will need to change the configuration option in the open computers so that it allows you to access things locally but in most case I'm going to use my website once that's done we're sweet we can type press ctrl D to exit out of here and now we're ready to go so let's just shut this guy down because he doesn't need to be running anymore we will take this BIOS out put that one back in so it boots up next time We'll head over to the electronic assembly now we will need a microcontroller it needs to be at least a tier 2 so that it can support the internet card that we'll need to be able to get the information off via titan so we'll put a cpu in there minimum is well maximum is tier 1 bit of ram redstone card in fact we need to put that there and of course our internet card which is a tier 2 and requires the top slot uh, and last but not least of course is the Titan BIOS. We will hit play It'll compile itself In our case it doesn't matter. We'll take this guy out. I'm gonna jump over to the station and Write up some code into that script and I'll meet you there Okay, so I've written up some code and we're back at the station here as you can see I've made a few adjustments uh, I lowered the roof down one just so that the the screen doors actually hit the roof and it looks a lot more flush with the roof although the glass doesn't quite look right but it still works pretty well um, added in a map uh, some rubbish van, ticket machine I've rearranged the footbridge a little bit so it comes down here still uh, probably the most important thing though is I have placed down the microcontroller and if we reset it you can hear a beep which indicates it's on there's a cart detector on top of it which is detecting if a cart happens on the old station we used a one of the detector rails which also works I was having some problems with the detector, detector rail and the station door uh, above us so just above this line here so I put a detector in there and faced it down so the redstone signal wouldn't go in all directions and now what happens if we go out here uh, we can go into here we can place a down a cart door opens much like in the old code it counts for a few about eight seconds then it counts down then it will close the doors and it will activate this rail for a brief moment so that the train can go on but if I do this again it will open the door waits its time but this time we haven't got to the, the delay that I want between the carts so you can hear in the background here it's doing a different beep and it will keep doing that until it gets to enough delay between the last cart and the cart and the cart that's currently waiting. At which point it will do the normal beeps, and then it will send off. There it is. Okay. So what that all means is that there will always be. I've got it currently set to about 45 seconds. So if there is a train within 45 seconds, it will delay it for a little bit longer. But we could change each level we want and of course because it's coming off the internet we can change it to anything we want okay so 
just to give you an idea on what's changed in the script, this is obviously the original script that I had. What I've done is I've added this wait delay variable here, which is our 45 seconds time, and that's the minimum time distance between two trains. The other variable I've added here is the internal tracking for last train. The other thing I've done here is this is the only change that's actually happened. So we have our while computer uptime. So when the computer starts up or when the microcomputer starts up, it'll be starting at zero and for every second it increases by one. So what we're doing here is if the computer's uptime is less than the last train, so that's our variable up here, plus the wait delay. So if it's, let's say the last train was at 10 seconds, we add 45 seconds, and if the current computer has not been running for longer than 55 seconds, then we will wait. And this beeping here was just to indicate what was going on. So I can now disable that. Um, it'll wait one second, and then loop around again. Once it is finished getting to that delay, then it will set the last train variable to be the computer's uptime and it will continue on the normal path. Otherwise this script is pretty much the same thing. And what I'll do is I'll put a copy of it down in the description as well uh, for anybody who wants to access it. Okay, so another cool station design and a cool add-on to our existing functionality in open computers to control our trains. Uh, and I'm really impressed with the MTR mod because it just looks really cool. But what I'm going to do is end the episode here. If you've enjoyed the episode or like the station design or the open computers stuff, do remember to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button. If you've got an idea for a name for the station or a question or comments, leave it down below. But otherwise, have a great day and see ya!